Americans here. Thanks so much for joining me for my preview of the 2019 Oregon Ducks. Quack, quack. If you don't know me, I'm Bobby Durkins. And you need to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. Why, you may ask? It notifies you when I put up my good stuff, which is every video I do. You can also find me sniffing around on Twitter at BDurkins and also on Instagram at the Bobby Durkins. When I think about Oregon, I think about Chip Kelly and those crazy offenses that he had. They were crazy. Putting up outrageous numbers. Scoring on anybody at will. I think about Marcus Mariota. Think about the, uh, those jerseys supplied by Nike. You know, they own y'all's university. Those jerseys are so loud and bright, it looks like a distorted angel. But over the past few years, things hadn't been so bright for y'all. Pun intended. In three seasons, you've had three head coaches. Now, Helfrich, he ended up not being, you know, not ended up panning out as well as we thought he was going to do. Then for one season, you had Willie Taggart. And then Florida State had to come in and get him after that impressive 6-6 six and six season. Last season, you had Mario Cristobal and led you to a 9-4 and four record. Not too bad for a team who was fumbling around. You lost some talent, and then y'all got the surprise of a lifetime. Christmas came early at Oregon when Justin Herbert said, I'm coming back. While other people were making up lies, claiming that they played three years in college just to get to the NFL, he said, I'm coming back. Now let's be honest with ourselves. You're bringing back Basically, all your offensive starters. Herbert, uh, you got that Verdell kid, Travis Travis uh, Dice coming back. You only lost you, what, leading receiver? On the defensive side of the ball, you're returning seven of the 11. Makes me want a slushy right now. But anyway, <coughs> a lot of talent there. A lot of talent there. And you pair that with probably one of the, if not the best recruiting class you've ever had, uh, with the likes of Kayvon Thibodeau, Mace Funa, and another guy that if I tried to pronounce his name, my mouth will go into traction. But needless to say, y'all have a really good chance of doing really good things. Now, I want to preface what I'm about to say because some people will be like, he's being a douche. And though that could be true. My beloved does not play in the toughest conference in the country. We know that the ACC is not great. But that doesn't take away that Clemson is who they are. I mean, if you think that they're just a pushover, ask Alabama and Notre Dame. That's our references. But for y'all, you play in the Pac-12, 14, 16, or how many other teams you got out there now, and you're not having to play against the Southern Cal of old where you have Leonard and Bush and Jarrett, and you got the Kardashians on the sidelines fixing their hair, and you got Snoop Dogg up there going. You're not playing against them. UCLA is such a back thought, it's hilarious. Washington, though they got a really good coach, we saw what they did last year, not much. Y'all have the opportunity to win your conference, and not only win your conference, maybe it is a stretch, maybe even make a run into playoffs. Y'all being healthy, Y'all playing well together, winning the games you're supposed to win, which is basically all of them, you very well could do it. Now, I know upsets are, are sitting right around the corner. Just like I got a cousin. He's always asking me to borrow money. He's always sitting around the corner. And he knows that I do have money on me. He good and well knows that I don't only have a debit card on me. I do have cold, hard cash. But I'll lie to him every time, and as I turn away from him, ask Jesus to forgive me. 
But it was between that or harbor hard feelings at, at my cousin because I know he's going to take said dollars and go down to the old strip club down here where, well, everybody ends up with STDs after they leave. We'll leave it at that. Y'all have a really good chance. So let me go ahead and jump into your season. Look at the games. Uh, if you don't know my style, I am not going to tell you about every little thing about Oregon. I'm not going to do it. If you're an Oregon, if you're an Oregon fan, you know the capacity of your stadium. You know you play in Eugene. We know about Phil Knight. You know about those special players that no, maybe nobody ever uh, else knows about. So I'm just going to jump right into it. You know, I, I don't need to tell you the circumference of your offensive coordinator's butthole. I don't need to tell you that. But that's weird. Who are y'all? God, that is weird. I love Dabo Sweeney to death, but if I know anything about his anus, I might just quit following football altogether. All right, so we're going to jump right into this thing. Very first game to me is a telltale game. Auburn. It's in Arlington, Dallas Cowboys Stadium, and I just want to be very blunt with you. <clears throat> Auburn is a team who one week will play like they are a true contender in the SEC. Not only the SEC, the SEC West, which has Alabama, LSU, Texas A&M. And then the very next week, you would think that they're members of the Girl Scouts. They'll blow it. And then they get mad when people call them out for blowing it. Last year, Washington played them in Atlanta. Now, for those of you who don't know the geographical uh, 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 proximity, some new words I've learned. Thank you, Wikipedia. Of Auburn to Atlanta... Not too far. So basically, they were playing a home game when they played Washington last year. Now, I know you're not Washington. And in fact, you have a better quarterback than what Washington did last year. At the end of the day, Auburn ended up beating Washington because SEC teams in the regular season, when they have to go play non-SEC teams, they take it personal. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, that's their very first game of the season, too, that I can remember. Y'all have the talent. I don't care how long Malzahn's been there. You have a coach, he's going to second season, and you got one of the best quarterbacks in the country, okay? We know what a good quarterback looks like because we got a genius quarterbacking for us. You've got the talent, you have the returning starters. I'm going to be blunt and tell you, if you lose to Auburn in Arlington, there's no which way you can twist or turn it unless Herbert gets arrested the night before for improperly touching a chipmunk and he plays that game and y'all lose. Don't y'all get mad if you run, run the table the rest of the season and nobody takes you serious. And the media's going to blow it up and talk about how good Auburn is, how good the SEC is. And I know the SEC's good. Auburn, come on. Y'all hadn't been legit since Cam Newton was there. So I'm telling you, Oregon, I am not going to make you pay for the sins of Washington, but I am going to tell you this. Don't piss this one away. I don't care what conference they come from. Y'all should beat them by a touchdown to 10 points. This is the trap game of your season. The very first one. Sorry. Just sometimes that's how the turd goes down the toilet. I think you win it. Barely. Next week, you play Nevada. You beat Nevada. Next week, you play Montana. You beat Montana. The next week, you play at Stanford. 
I used to be scared of this game. I'm not scared of this game. I think they're going to play you tough. I think they're going to try to come after you. I think they're going to give you their best game. You're going to beat them. You're off. Next week, you play California. There's no reason on God's green earth why you should lose to California. And if you do, shut down the program and start focusing on badminton. Next week, on a Friday night, you're going to play Colorado. You're going to beat them. At Washington. Next trap game. I know who they lost. But I also know who's coaching them. One of the things I always harp on is the power of the person wearing the headset on the sidelines. Period. Period. And I believe Chris Peterson is coming for you. And I believe that if you have your head stuck up your tail, you can lose this ball game. But I believe you win it. Washington State. Oh, Mike Leach. One of the biggest fans in the world of ESPN. And one of the nicest, most warm souls you could ever meet. I think you beat him, don't play around with him. This is the type of game he comes out and he wins. I believe you win it. At Southern Cal, you're going to win this game. You're off. And you play Arizona. You're both off of a bye. I call an upset. You lose to Arizona. I know you think I'm a bucktooth incest buffoon. And maybe that's true. I mean, look, if they, their cousins are above, even the good book says that you can date them. Anyway. I believe this is the game that gets you. I believe this is the game that you're looking already ahead to the next week and the next week, and you know most likely you're going to meet Utah in the in the conference championship. You're already hearing about how great y'all are. We're, college game day is going to be talking about how the West has become, has become relevant again just because of you. And you say that's impossible. I'll tell you right now. And I don't want to even bring it up. But it happened. They lost to Syracuse two years ago on a Friday night. Had no business losing to them. Had no business with Syracuse even being within 14 points of us. But we lost. The year we won the national championship with Deshaun Watson. We played a very underwhelming Pittsburgh team. And they beat us. If you'd have told me at that time that we would go on to win the national championship, I'd look at you and tell you, I just don't think so. Really good team? Maybe. My point, if you're following, is if Clemson Tigers can do it when they got Deshaun Watson, you can do it. I believe you lose the game to Arizona. Next week at Arizona State, I believe you beat them. I believe this time you woke up out of your slumber. You're not going to be, you know, pissing around. You're still going to make the conference championship. You're still relevant. You're a, still a top ten team. I think it will be a close game with Arizona. I believe that because it was a close game, they're not going to penalize you too much. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Well, I'll get to that in a second. Then you play your rival, Oregon State. The only thing those beavers are good at is chomping on wood. They suck at football. You'll beat them. Have you losing one regular season game? And I do believe that you will play Utah. You will play Utah in the conference championship. Now, wait later to tell what I think you're going to do there. But I am going to tell you this. That if you want to be taken seriously this year, you better hope that you don't lose a game. Because here's the cold, hard truth. Unless your name is Clemson or Alabama... Nobody is a shoe-in. Even somebody like Ohio State who has all of these years of tradition behind them, 
even they can be left out. Just ask them. Even Georgia can be left out. Just ask them. So if there is an undefeated Clemson, an undefeated Alabama, an undefeated Oklahoma, and an undefeated Ohio State, and you lose one game by three points, you're going to get left out. Better hope you don't do it. Well, thank you for joining me for this preview of the 2019 Oregon Ducks. As I said, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications. You can find me on Twitter, at B. Durkins. You can also find me on Instagram, at D. Bobby Durkins. Hey, if you've been here and even if you had not you know this one thing about me. I'm Bobby Durkins. You keep showing up. I'll keep showing out. Bobby Durkins.